Uh, over to you, Mr. Pallavarajan. Uh, please uh, go ahead and uh, uh, take this, take over the session. Thank you, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you. Hope I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, very clear. Okay, great. Uh, the first, thanks for uh, the generous uh, introduction. And uh, thanks for all the doctors uh, who have taken time to join in. So for the next 45 minutes to one hour, uh, I will cover, uh, you know, I'll give you the flow like what I'm going to cover. And thereafter, uh, we'll uh, open the floor for uh, q and uh, I'll try to address I mean, as many questions as possible. So the flow would be, uh, ideally, I want to talk about what we do so that you get uh, uh, to know about what EMS Bazaar do. The next, straight away, I don't want to jump into uh, PMS and the AF, even though that is a clue, but I want to touch a bit about uh, uh, stock market. And then uh, I want to give a glance about uh, what's happening in the industry, uh, what are all the products which is available. And then uh, I'll give a differentiation about uh, how the products uh, are unique uh, uh, in nature. And then uh, within that, you will you will also come to know like what is PMS and what is AF. That will be the four subjects. So this is how the flow is going to be. I have made some presentation. I'd like to share the screen once again. Little more louder, sir. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. So hope the screen is visible. Yes, sir. So first, as I told, uh, I'd like to explain what we do. Ideally, there are uh, three businesses we do uh, within alternative investment industry. Now, let me explain when I call it alternative investment industry. In India, there are two products which will fall under that. One is PMS, which is Portfolio Management Services. And second, it is an alternative investment funds, which is AAF. So these are the two industry which we focus upon. And within this, there are three different business we do within this industry. Let me explain what we do. First is uh, PMS Bazaar. Ideally, I mean, this is our core uh, business. And uh, what we try to do is that we are a platform. There are uh, about some 350 plus PMS company in India. And we try to take the data from the maximum company and put the data in the platform and create a content knowledge information, which is available for free. Now, anyone can register at our platform. And there are a couple of reasons, you know, why they should register uh, at our platform. So they can be able to get an, you know, complete information about PMS and AF, and they can compare between uh, the products. Uh, in addition to this, there are a couple of things, you know, we also do monthly newsletter, which we have already crossed over five years, which will give a deep dive study about a research report about one specific AMC. What do they do? What's their uh, background? Who is the portfolio manager? And, uh, you know, what are the strategy they manage? What are the uh, investment philosophy process and so on? So next we have PMS and AF guide, which is like in fact sheet. And uh, we cover about 350 uh, plus products and you get access to all the products in one guide. And then we also come out with a special edition. Basically, this is a quarterly report. Again, it is a very deep dive analysis about the industry as well as the asset management company. Now, the very popular uh, medium of us is webinar. Uh, we have conducted over uh, 60, 70 webinars now. And uh, in terms of registration, we got about over 15,000 uh, registration. In terms of uh, participants, uh, it is over 10,000. So then we also do a lot of blogs, podcasts, and uh, we do exclusive fund manager connect. Basically, it is a kind of an interview, try to understand how do the fund manager manage their money. And again, this uh, PMS and AF summit, we have completed six editions so far, and this uh, summit will always happen in uh, Mumbai. And the uh, who's and who's of the industry will be there uh, in this uh, summit, and it has been very, very successful uh, so far. And now we started doing international summit as well. And uh, this year in the February, we have did in Dubai, we got a significant response, and uh, it will also be uh, you know, done uh, for next year as well. So then, in addition to this, we have a wide data of coverage. You know, anyone who ever uh, you know visits our platform, what are the need, right? Basically, they should have more product. We cover more than eighty percent of the industry as such. And these are all you know a few of the reasons you know why somebody has to register at our platform for free and then access to all our uh, content. So the next business we do is a very interesting thing. Uh, this is also one of our uh, core. This is a distribution. Uh, 
you know, win what we have. So ideally, any of the investors who wish to invest in uh, PMS or AAF, this as SR, I mean, initially said that, you know, PMS and AAF is uh, kind of a complicated product. It definitely need a lot of uh, handholding and definitely need to understand better. And hence, we, I always suggest, you know, whether through PMS Bazaar or any other uh, you know, distributor or advisor, you will have to, uh, you know, approach them and uh, try to understand uh, your, I mean, basically expand your need and profile and kind of, you know, and then uh, select the right product. So we also do that. And the advantage of investing through PMS, there are a couple of advantages. I'll mention like few. Let's say that if you want to put it, uh, first of all, we are very, you know, exclusive in PMS and AFNs. We are expertise in this area. We have the data and the kind of data what we have, uh, I would probably say that nobody has uh, in this country. So that is the kind of data what uh, we have. So based on the data, we do a lot of analysis and based on that, we suggest the uh, product according to the client uh, profile. And we also have dedicated relationship manager and uh, more than that, uh, let's say if somebody is putting in three, four PMS or two, three more AAF. So the, all this can be viewed in a single uh, dashboard. And uh, currently we are managing over 800 core uh, assets across the country. So this is uh, the another business what we do, uh, which is called uh, Finalica. Finalica is nothing but uh, uh, a deep dive analytical uh, platform. Now, the data, whatever we are uh, providing at PMS Bazaar, that is suffice for uh, kind of investors uh, to start with to know more about the product. However, institutions uh, like, you know, uh, a, a big wealth contest, uh, you know, like it could be Motilala, it could be ASK wealth, Kotak wealth. I mean, I can keep naming a lot of wealth contests and also some of the product teams. And uh, these, these uh, product team uh, will do a deep dive analysis, analysis study. And hence, you know, they need more information, more data, more analytics, and then uniform analytics across the product. And this is the only product in the country, which has uh, all the products, you know, including ULIP. We have PMS, uh, AF. In addition to this, we also have uh, MF and ULIP. So that uh, whoever is subscribed to this Finalica will be able to do analysis across the product on a uniform way. And uh, currently, we have over 2,000 plus users. Uh, some of the uh, few names to uh, mention is, I mean, from STFC to Motilal to Kota to ASK to Julius Bear. So there are a lot of institutions who have subscribed to our uh, platform. So from the retail uh, investors, I mean, when I mean retail here at uh, Alter Rate, it is 50 lakhs uh, kind of uh, size. So from the retail to the distribution side, from the investment, and uh, for a deep dive analytics to the institution, and also in addition to this, we also supply data to media house. Now you will see that at least some five, six story which will come on PMS and AF every month. Uh, it could be from uh, uh, Business Today or Money Control or Business Line or Live Main. So there are a couple of media, you know, business media. But all this media consumes our uh, data. So we at PMS Bazaar, we cover the entire ecosystem. It is not just you know data like uh, we provide. We also distribute. We also give a data and analytics to some of the top-notch institutions in the country. So this is a uh, you know, small brief about uh, what we do, and uh, these are all our branches. You know, currently we are operating, and eventually we'll keep increasing our uh, branches as well. And this year we have started our operation in UAV as well because there are a couple of uh, NRI clients. You know, who have showed a lot of interest in the on-credit investment space. Uh, so this is what you know all about uh, PMS Bazaar in a nutshell. So now I'll I'll move on to uh, you know some of the interesting uh, subject even before I talk about uh, PMS and uh, AF. So I think you would have uh, already gone through a lot of classes. I mean, Sarah's mentioned in the beginning, you know, you would have uh, maybe learned about uh, basics of equity, advanced equity, mutual funds kind of thing. So today I'm, I'm not going to uh, go a very deep dive because you would have already learned, but I'm sure that whatever I'm going to talk today, maybe you would have not uh, uh, heard of probably. So this is the number of company which is listed in our uh, Indian market, prop traded. I mean, in terms of listed, it is over 4,000, but in terms of stock traded, it is about uh, three. This is uh, that these data are uh, as on yesterday. And if you look at the bottom, I've given some uh, marks and number which is about 350 lakh crore, which is nothing but <clears throat> our entire market capitalization size. 
So this is about 350 lakh crore, uh, which means that uh, we are at little over uh, 4 trillion in terms of uh, US dollar. The interesting point is that even though we are at uh, 350 lakh crore, the first 50 companies alone comprise of 50 percentage. So I told that the number of companies are about, let's say, 3,500. Just 50 company size is equivalent to the balance uh, company. You know, that is a kind of size. The next 100 companies, it is about 65 percentage. And the next 500 companies, it's not the next 500, sorry, the total 500 companies, it is 95 percentage. So again, out of the 350 lakh crore, just 500 companies comprise of 95 percentage. And balance the 3,000 odd companies is about 5 percentage. If I take only one company, Reliance uh, Industry, the market cap is about 17 lakh crore, which means Reliance Industries is equivalent to this 5 percentage, which is equivalent to 3,000 odd companies. So one company is equal to uh, more than 3,000 companies. So that is the difference. Why I'm saying this? Is that even though our market uh, cap, I mean, looks I mean, bigger, uh, four, four uh, plus trillion, and we are the fifth largest, and it is more of a concentrated. You know, we have very limited company who have created wealth for our uh, investors. Uh, you know, uh, over the period. Now, if I take the global market cap, it is about hundred and ten trillion, and whereas Indian market cap, which is four trillion, which we call it as you know, so-called uh, high currently. Of course, I mean, in terms of a lot of factors, market is trading at high. But still, while looking at a global allocation, at the global market share, we are just less than 4%. In this, if you take United States alone, it comprises of, you know, 40, 42% kind of market cap. And just one company, Apple alone, the market cap is about 3, 3, lakh, uh, 3, 3 trillion. So our market cap is about 4 trillion and just one company market cap is about 3 trillion. And uh, in fact, I mean, a couple of months back, the entire Indian market cap uh, and the uh, Apple market cap was equivalent. So that is a kind of, uh, you know, uh, size where the US market and we are very, very small is what I'm trying to interpret. There is a long way to go from here. And it, I also wanted to give one more uh, data point here. Currently, if you take our... Uh, GDP, again, in terms of global GDP, we're just 3.5 percentage. We are at 3.5 trillion. It took 75 years to reach 3.5 trillion. Even though we call, uh, you know, we are the fifth or the sixth largest economy uh, globally, but still in terms of, uh, you know, global market share, we are just at 3.5 percentage. And it, it took 75 years for us to reach here. Now, to reach the next 3.5 trillion, which is about uh, 7 trillion, it will hardly take you know, seven to eight years from here. So whatever growth we have seen uh, in the last uh, uh, 75 years, the same growth can be seen in the next, I mean, seven point, just 7.5 years. So the the uh, market cap to GDP is about 120 percentage because market cap is 4.2 trillion and uh, GDP is 3.5 trillion. So in terms of this ratio, it is 120 percentage, where the global ratio is about 150 percentage. So even if I take the same 120% ratio, the current ratio, and let's say that if the uh, uh, the 7 trillion is going to happen is in the next 7, 7 and a half years uh, down the line, even at 100 percentage, the market cap from the current 4.2 trillion will go to 7 trillion, even at the worst case, I'm just telling. At the best case, at the same 120 percentage, we'll be able to see that 8 or 8.5 lakh crore uh, so, uh, you know, trillion in terms of market cap. So the incremental market cap of about uh, 3.5 trillion to 4 trillion, we can expect in next 7, 7.5 years, the kind of growth what we have. Even at a worst case, instead of happening at 7 years, probably it may take 8 years, 9 years, or worst case at 10 years, but definitely there is a significant uh, wealth creation opportunity which is available. This is what I'm trying to interpret uh, you know, from this uh, data point. Uh, So this is uh, one uh, fascinating data. Uh, you, it is very rare to see that promoters' holdings are significantly higher uh, globally, but in India, it is a used case. There are about, including government, is about 50% what promoters' holding. But uh, idea to show this is that there are about 10 percentage 
of uh, retail investors, including some of the HNIs who are uh, holding the uh, you know the stock market uh, cap. So, which means three hundred and fifty lakh crore is what I told the market cap, and ten percent of the retail is about uh, thirty five lakh crore. Yeah. Now we'll come to the subject. So there are multiple uh, way to it must. Uh, I'm limiting to uh, equity as such here, and uh, I can open a debit account directly, and I can invest on my own. This is one option, which is called a direct investment, and there is a, there are other option which is professionally managed. I don't want to manage my money. Better I want to give it to some of the professional. In that case, there are three product which is available. In fact, I mean there are ULIPS and there are NPS, but these are all I mean traditional connecting with some other product kind of insurance and the pension fund. So I don't want to uh, you know take that as a consideration. But here mutual funds PMS and AF will fall into the professional uh, managed product. And direct is not professional, it is being managed by our uh, own. So broadly, these are all the category which is uh, available. So this is broadly, you know, again, the size uh, of the overall industry. There are about 14 crore demand account uh, in our uh, country. And uh, fascinatingly, post pre-COVID, it was just 4 crore. And post-COVID, we saw an incremental 10 crore demand account uh, which got open. I think that every month there are about uh, 2 to 3 million accounts are getting added. Next is mutual funds. The number of investors at mutual funds are 4 crore. And whereas uh, the, the, the entire industry size, including debt, and the entire asset class uh, is about 14 lakh uh, crore. And the next product uh, is uh, PMS. Which is the number of investors, uh, interestingly, it is uh, 1.4 lakhs. Because the minimum ticket size here is 50 lakhs. And AF, there is no data, but uh, ideally, we believe that the number of clients will be 2.5 lakhs. So there will be some duplication between these clients, but broadly, if you take alternates as a product, there will be about 2.5 lakh to 3 lakh clients who would have invested. So these are the broadly you know, products which is uh, available in our uh, country. So what is the need for uh, professional management? Right. So I can invest on my own. I can open a DMED account. I can buy any stocks, whatever I want to buy. But why there is a need for uh, professional management? First is that I understand even as you, uh, as a professional, it's very difficult to find time. Uh, so it's very, uh, uh, time is very essence for us. And hence, you know, to save a time, better we'll give it to some professional. Second, lack of knowledge. Because of the product, I mean, there are a lot of complicated product. And second, even if you want to direct equity, you need to understand, to read the balance sheet, how the industry and how the sector performs and how the stock performs and so on. And third is discipline. I mean, a lot of things can be discussed on the discipline, but broadly, there have been a lot of discipline which will be missing from an individual investors. Lack of uh, portfolio construct. Basically, you know, what I'm trying to mean here is that uh, whenever you manage your DMAT account on your own, you might try it, you might you can buy a best stocks, but the number of the kind of allocation what you provide to these stocks would be very, very uh, minimal. Maybe for a quality will uh, give a higher, uh, I mean, a lower allocation. For a non quality, you might give a higher allocation. This is what generally we have seen, you know, whenever uh, you know we do analysis of a direct equity portfolio. And if you look at the number of stocks, what we have seen on average. More than 75 stocks are there in any individual DP. And if we look at, I mean, highest allocation, we have seen surprising out of 75 stocks. There are clients who are having more than 30, 40% allocation in a single stock. And whereas the 75 stocks will have probably 0 0.05 or kind of, you know, 0.5 percentage, which has no value to the portfolio. Even if you give 1 percentage allocation to a portfolio, even if portfolio doubles, your portfolio will add only one percentage. So there is no reason for giving, you know, very less allocation. So hence I mean here, the lack of portfolio construct, <coughs> sorry. Next come non-quality stocks. This is broadly, you know, uh, we could see that most of the clients who are managing their money on their own at a home, the non-quality stocks will have an higher allocations. I'll give one example. I told that you know our overall market cap is 350 lakh crore. And if I take one institutions, institutions alone, when I mean institutions, it could be FIs, DIs, 
and LIC kind of thing. Just a second, just uh, take some more. Sorry. Sorry. So institutions like uh, LIC, mutual funds, foreign institutions. So look at these companies' holdings. Their holdings will be at a high quality company. Now, what is high quality company? In a simple definition. If we take the first fifty company or hundred companies, these qualities are much much higher. <coughs> if we take the five hundred companies, the qualities are kind of moderate. And if you go beyond these five hundred companies, and you will have to compromise on the quality. So there are three different buckets broadly to put that. If you take the institution holding, the maximum holding would be at the top hundred companies, and kind of very minimal allocation to five hundred companies or less than that. But whereas if you take a direct equity portfolio, the majority of the holding would be adverse. Their holdings would be into the non-quality company majority, and few of the uh, holdings would be the anti-quality company. So it is very difficult for a client to understand the quality and non-quality because they look at only the price price of the company. Just to give an example, now we we'll take a company called Reliance Industries and the Reliance Infrastructure. Now Reliance Infra from two thousand rupees at around this two thousand seven today it is trading at roughly about two hundred rupees. Probably it came to fifty and then again it went to two hundred. Probably would have entered at fifty. They would have made money. But ideally, see that you know on a long term basis it has destroyed the investors' wealth. And if you look at the Reliance Industries, whereas it has moved from 500 rupees to 2,500 rupees at the same period, which has created five times wealth for the investors. Now, if you look at the sales, Reliance Industries do about 8, 8.5 lakh, uh, lakh crore sales, whereas Reliance Industries do only, uh, uh, sorry, Reliance Infra do only 25,000 crore uh, sales. If you look at the balance sheet, the pathetic balance sheet, you could able to see it Reliance Infra. And whereas you can see some of the best uh, kind of balance sheet which will be there in the Reliance Industries, but unfortunately, if you look at the retail holdings of uh, Reliance Infra, that will be about ninety percentage, and whereas uh, whereas for Reliance uh, Industries, it will be very very thin. It will be less than fifteen <coughs> percentage. So this is just one example. I can give I mean the sort of example you know between the quality and non quality company. And as why that you know majority of the clients are holding non uh, non quality company. Lastly, we could have I mean couple of stocks in our portfolio. However, we don't uh, you know attempt to uh, check like how we have performed while comparing with the benchmark or indices. Check a simple a simple example. Nifty, you can just check in last five years what are the return Nifty has given, and what are the return your portfolio has given. And if you compare that, and if your return is more than the Nifty on a longer period, then you are definitely doing a great job. But again, in our study broadly, we have seen that more than ninety percentage of the investors could not able to beat the benchmark, or neither the professional managers' uh, performance. So these are the reason, you know, why there is a need for a professional uh, management. So as I told, in professional management, there are three products. Mutual funds, BMS, and AA. Mutual funds is a more of a traditional investment, which start as low as five hundred rupees, and BMS and AA, which will fall into alternative investment product. And as I told earlier, BMS minimum ticket size is fifty lakhs, and AA uh, minimum ticket size is hundred lakhs. Now I think we would have already, uh, you know, uh, discuss about mutual fund, got some idea about mutual fund, and mutual fund is very popular. In India, just to give some updates about uh, 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 mutual funds, most of the things you would know, and it is a pooled level uh, investment. Let's say that I mean some of there are some uh, hundred people who are investing. That will be pooled, and that will be you know in turn will be invested into stocks or a debt instrument. Now so minimum is five hundred as mentioned. There is no customization possible. What I mean here, if somebody is putting five thousand rupees or somebody is putting five crore rupees. The product exactly will remain same. The only difference will be the number of units will change, but the underlining, the structure, the investment philosophy, process, everything will remain exactly same for the five thousand clients or for the five crore client. Now, if you look at the portfolio construct, majority of the mutual funds holding will have 
over 50 stocks. And again, we have seen that a lot of clients and number of mutual funds holdings, what they, have is, they hold is more than 10 funds. Let's take hypothetical example of somebody holding 10 mutual funds. Let's take that 50 stocks is their minimum for sure, which means there are 500 stocks in their portfolio. Even if you remove the duplication, still, you know, the investor will end up holding some 200 to 250 stocks. If somebody is going to hold 200, 250 stocks, I'm sure that definitely the probability of, you know, beating the market is very, very, very low. Hence, the number of funds has to be very lower. It could be kind of, you know, four to six funds or maximum uh, could be seven funds with a less uh, overlap. Otherwise, your portfolio will definitely not add value. Now, there are a lot of restrictions in mutual funds. One, let's say that if I'm a fund manager, if I'm going to manage 1,000 crore in my uh, portfolio, I cannot allocate more than 100 crore in a single company. It could be some of the best company. My conviction could be greater at that company. Even if I wish to allocate some 20-25%, it is not possible because there is a restriction. This is just one restriction. I would say that there are a couple of restrictions, but it is all for good, you know, to ensure that the risk is protected, the downside is protected. And hence, SEBI has made a lot of, uh, they have set a lot of boundaries for mutual fund uh, as such to manage the money. And in addition to SEBI, internal restrictions are also there at every uh, fund house uh, to ensure that risk is well protected. So broadly, mutual fund as a product, it, it, it comes with a risk protection, and then they will think of uh, return. So that, that's how the mutual funds broadly works. So this is for a, and if you look at the fund, uh, uh, you know, kind of product, what you will get from equity, debt, liquid, hybrid, there are a plethora of offering which is uh, available at uh, mutual fund, which is very good actually, you know, just by having a, uh, let's say even if a 5 lakh rupee, I can invest in multiple uh, style, it could be value, it could be growth, it could be sector, and I, I also get a benefit of tax advantage by putting an ELS scheme. And I can also get a kicker by investing in the sectoral scheme. I can also put it in a very short term fund, in a debt fund or a liquid fund. And so you get variety of product uh, and it covers across all the uh, you know goals. Like let's say that even if I have a very short term goal or a medium term goal or even a long term goal and every goal can be achieved at uh, mutual funds. So, so now I move to our core subject, which is uh, PMS and AF. Now we'll talk about uh, PMS. Now, what is the difference between generally mutual fund and PMS? As I told that, you know, mutual fund, it is more of a retail oriented uh, product and it is meant to, uh, you know, risk protecting and then the returns will fall in. And hence there is a lot of restrictions. Since this product PMS and AF is broadly for an accredited investors, there are some, uh, exception which is given to the fund manager. Perhaps, I mean, more exception given to the fund manager in terms of portfolio construct. There is no compromise on the regulations. The regulations is very strong and it is, I mean, akin to a mutual funds regulation. But in terms of freedom to the fund manager, it is very high uh, when it comes to PMS. Just to give one or two examples in line with the mutual funds, it can be customized. Now, let's say a client comes in and you want to put a crore P investment in PMS and PMS is always a bilateral agreement. It will be as like your demand, there will be a demand account which will be open and you are giving to a professional to manage. It is as simple as a direct equity. The only difference is that you are giving a, a, a mandate to a fund manager to manage your money. Here the stocks will come to your DP. It is not pool level. Second is that you can customize as I told. Now let's say that uh, you are all uh, doctors and uh, let's say you want to, your, your conviction is more into this uh, space. Let's say that uh, hospitality or a pharma. Probably uh, you could uh, push uh, the fund manager to give more allocation to this sector. Kind of. And second is that since you're working at some of the listed company and you don't want to invest into those companies and that also can be put across so that even the fund manager will not invest in those companies. Third, probably would have already invested, uh, you know, some of the sectorial bet separately uh, at mutual funds or at a separate portfolio that you have more weighted into the Parma and you don't want to put more money to the Parma. So then you can defend to the fund manager who don't want to put money to the Parma because you already have more uh, allocation to the Parma at a overall portfolio level. So that is also possible. So there are a lot of customization which is, I mean, possible at uh, BMS level, which cannot be possible at uh, uh, mutual fund level. Second is that the majority of the PMS, if we take, 
the portfolio construct is between 15 to 25 stocks. In fact, there are PMS who are running PMS with just seven eight, uh, stocks and they ex extremely did well. But since the number of stocks are very less, the probability of volatility is very high and hence we uh, you know, term it as a little more uh, risk than comparing with the broader product. But broadly, it is about 15 to 25 stocks which will be there in the PMS. Unlike in mutual funds, it is I mean, 50 and uh, above. And uh, in terms of regulation, surprisingly, you know, many people doesn't know that PMS <coughs> regulation is way before the mutual funds. So it has a very long uh, uh, track record. And, but the popularism has just started in you know, a few years back because you know uh, earlier it was 5 lakhs and then it changed in 2012 it was to, to move to 25 lakhs and now it has been changed to 25 lakhs, I mean 50 lakhs from 25 lakhs. So if you look at the aspiration level in India who has a potential to 50 lakhs, it is very thin. But if you look at the growth who has a potential to put 50 lakhs in the last three years, <coughs> it is significantly higher. And we envy such this kind of growth and perhaps more growth will continue to happen in this uh, PMS and the AF space. So broadly, I've put it I mean, together in a single slide <coughs> so that you can get a better uh, Perspective about what is, I mean, what is the difference between, uh, I think I should have put a title, difference between PMS and mutual fund. It is not business because we respect mutual fund also as a product. And because, you know, it is more risk oriented product and it also uh, give opportunity with the women of the small investment with the multiple uh, category of the product. Uh, so this is for a retail client. This is for an HNA client. The construct is very, very, very stringent here at the mutual funds, like kind of, I mean, number of stocks and in terms of allocation and so on. And here, they can customize your portfolio, they can reduce the number of stocks in their portfolio. And in turn, at the long term, the probability of making money, let's say that I put 50 lakhs in mutual funds and I put uh, 50 lakhs in PMS, the probability of making uh, money is more at PMS while comparing with the benchmark. Let's say the benchmark give 10% 10, 10 return, mutual fund can give 12% return. And PMS can give 13, 14, 15 percent kind of return. But these are all probability. And you will always see that some of the mutual funds will keep performing much better than the PMS. But, but overall, if you take the number of funds and if you compare and if you do the study, this we do on a regular basis, we have seen that always PMS has an edge and it also has a direct connect with the fund manager. And it has also been well constructed and it is a bilateral kind of you know portfolio. And hence, you should always invest in mutual fund. And you should also have definitely have an allocation to PMS as well based on your uh, size of the investment. Let's say if somebody is having only 50 lakhs, so then we don't recommend to come into PMS. Somebody is having a one crore, yes, but still, you know, one crore is still lower. But anything above one crore or 1.5 crore, yes, still, because let's say even if you have 1.5 crore, 50 lakhs, you can put it into mutual funds or even more than that because you can put it, let's say, even if you invest 10 lakhs in five, six different products. Still, you have left with money where you can able to allocate it in PMS uh, space. So. so then I'll come to that uh, next uh, subject, which is an alternative investment fund, AAF. The minimum ticket size for AAF is 100 lakhs, as I covered earlier. So broadly, these are all the category at uh, AAFs. Now, category one, which is basically you will see that, you know, venture debt, private equity, uh, uh, venture debt, angel funds, SME funds kind of funds will fall into category one. Category two is the largest category. You will see that a lot of private credit funds which will be there and you will have real estate funds which will be there and you will have a debt fund, fund of funds. So there are, this is a very largest and out of 100% of the AF industry size, about 80% comprise only into category two. And category three, which will be similar to mutual funds, PMS, you know, you have a lot of, I mean, long only funds, you know, buy and hold for a long term. And uh, this category three is similar to, again, I mean, uh, mutual funds, because in mutual funds, it's a pool level. And similarly, here also, it is a pool level. Now, in terms of taxation, category one and category two, it is a pass-through, which means whatever, I mean, uh, profit comes, that will be passing through to the investors. And according to your tax level, you'll have to file the tax. Whereas at category three, 
the fund has to pay the tax at their end and then give it to the balance to the investors <clears throat> let's say that uh, you put 100 lakhs in pm i mean uh, af the long only af at 5 years it's an, it's an equity at 5 years let's say this 100 has become 200 and the fund manager the fund has to pay the tax let's say for the short term capital gain it is 15 percent long term it is a little bit 10 percentage and let's say this 200 after paying tax hypothetically let us take that 15 rupees as a tax so then what you would receive is 185 rupees is what you would receive which is a tax free because the tax has been already paid now i'll touch upon the products which is there uh, you know some of the product and very interesting product you will see i'll give few examples now there are angel funds which is available and uh, fortunately like sebi has given exception for an angel fund to start with 25 lakhs i told that 100 lakh is the minimum uh, investment for a year there is only for angel fund specific condition to the approval of sebi while filing the fund the funds can be at 25 lakhs also if if i talk about uh, the private equities uh, side or a startup side broadly i would say there are different levels uh, for for a startup company from the beginning stage which is the nascent stage i would say and the angels uh, angel stage and you know then we see private equity pre ipo and then listing so there are different category and now within this category there are new categories also emerged like i mean series a would be one of the funding but now pre series a level is coming so all these levels if you want to invest in these kind of levels uh, the different uh, variety of category a is the only product which is available now for angel fund and even before the angel fund i'll tell you there are some interesting fund which is come in india now this fund the fund is called uh, antler india this fund what they try to do now let's say uh, traditionally we used to see at some of the best business school some of the best company used to go and do uh, you know campus interview and recruit a student here this company go and recruit you know kind of uh, student as an entrepreneur whoever has an aspiration to become an entrepreneur and they do a lot of i mean uh, you know deep dive study uh, about any of the project whichever uh, a student wants to present and then they pick the students and then they allow them to <coughs> you know start the business you know according to their wish and this is this is very nascent stage at india and then angel fund you know the kind of the very basic uh, again the very nascent stage and then we have pre series a and series a fund till the pre ipo listed any you you can buy uh, at a direct equity or you know at mutual funds or pms but before listing itself we have i mean variety of uh, product which is there in our country and this is the only product where you can able to invest through professional so oh, private credit <coughs> sorry private credit is a very very interesting uh, product and if you take last one two years there has been significant money which is coming to uh, private credit now what is this private credit is all about it is a kind of a fixed income now let's say that <coughs> you put 100 lakh uh, 1 crore rupees and this private credit company will put it in a kind of an sme company or some of the established company where they will get in turn you know kind of you know 14 percent 16 percent uh, interest and this interest will be passed on to the uh, investors of course there is a risk attached to it and there are a lot of reputed companies large companies which are doing private credit you know it could be sundaram or it could be icic it could be access i can name couple of you know largest uh, institution which are uh, running this private credit and this is almost similar to uh, you know mutual funds uh, debt scheme and which comes but remember like one thing at af is that most of the products comes with uh, almost i would say that almost every product comes with in you know, a login scheme at category 1 and category 2 has to be logged in only at category 3 to an extent if it is a long only there is an opportunity for an open ended scheme there are very few schemes are available but broadly this are a closed standard and investors who have minimum 5 years time frame has to come into af even if it is a fixed income the liquidity will be very very low and if you want a great liquidity in terms of equity mutual funds and pms as a great liquidity and in terms of debt definitely i mean you can always have uh, you know mutual fund as a product but here it comes with an higher return the private credit side with a regular cash flow with a locked in uh, with a locked in as an uh, uh, you know 5 years or 6 years or there are some product which comes with 7 years also as a locked in so there is a venture debt again there is another product which also will fall under uh, this private credit now what is venture debt there is a venture capital which will go and invest into the company and they in turn they take uh, you know kind of stakes from the company and in venture in venture debt they will not stay they will not take the equity of uh, the company they will just you know take uh, in turn uh, the interest it is very risky product but however there are a couple of company which has a zero default 
and have delivered you know significant return to the, to the investor it's a fixed income kind of you know we have seen that kind of 18% 20% return has been given to the uh, investors the biggest popular fund in india is a I mean, real estate fund real estate fund give lot of advantage to the investors now let's say that if i have a crore rupee if i need to buy an apartment probably i can buy i mean own a own own apartment or a worst case i can buy you know i can stretch and i can buy probably two apartments sir but if you put it in a real estate fund this fund what they do they collectively they take the money and hence i have a, a money power let's say that the fund size would be at 500 crore or 1000 crore they will select the project one could be at chennai one could be at hyderabad one could be at bangalore one could be at noida and they will segregate the investment and they'll give the money to the builder and in turn they they get a cover also let's say they want to fund 500 crore probably they will take a cover for you know 1000 crore kind of cover so that you know even at a worst case you know that can be liquidated and the capital can be returned to the investors and that is a kind of you know structure real estate so real estate give lot of i mean production in terms of capital the returns will be again on a regular flow you will get a cash flow let's say again the fund each of the fund will have their own target it could be 12 14 16 percent higher the return higher the risk you know the fund is going to target as a return is 24 percent then definitely the risk is higher the fund which is targeting to give a 12 13 percent kind of return the, the risk is lower but there is again the variety of fund which is available across the real estate and now there are commercial fund also which has started coming in so this is again the largest uh, category this also will fall into the category too this is also one of the largest category now another interesting uh, category is a long short fund long short fund is the word itself explain the fund manager as a as an opportunity to go long as well as short like let's say in mutual funds you cannot leverage and pms you cannot leverage but if as a product sebi allows to leverage up to two times let's say that i mean you invest 100 rupees or a fund manager has 100 rupees he can take position up to 200 rupees so what fund manager will do they will try to take a leverage up to 200 i mean two times and then they will try to uh, uh, you know enhance the return what they try to do so basically it comes with a very low risk fund so within long shot there are three three two three category now aggressive long shot are there where the risk will be little higher and there are very conservative long short fund where the risk will be very very thin and this category through three benefit is that again the taxation is paid by the fund itself whatever investors receive it becomes you know tax free because the fund has already paid the tax in the last category is i mean uh, in this slide like i mean there is a fund of fund so ideally a fund can invest into multiple fund now let's say as i told <coughs> the startup fund comes with a little riskier uh, risk because it is a very basic and nascent stage there are fund of funds who will take 100 lakh and they will put in a different fund 20 20 rupees let's say they are going to segregate so again the risk has been well diversified so that is also the attraction is getting started in india now recently there are certain some of the company have formed fund of funds so this is the only product ave is the only product you can invest in a different variety of asset class it is not only equity alone it could be unlisted equity within unlisted there are different categories as i mentioned from the angel level to uh, the pre ipo level and similarly you also have a private credit uh, kind of funds you know where it is kind of a fixed income you get a regular income but it comes with a lock in but the returns are much higher than what uh, mutual fund gives then long shot you know get a leverage and hence uh, you know the fund manager has a potential to minimize the risk and maximize the return and then within private credit i also mentioned there is a real estate fund there is a venture debt fund and there are new funds which are uh, emerging in this uh, space so there are huge varieties of funds which is available at uh, af which can meet all your uh, investment need at one product which is af now this is what i've been referring and uh, the, the industry is growing significantly the overall industry size is 8.5 lakh crore roughly and out of this category 2 alone comprise of you know over uh, 80 percentage now one thing i want to mention here i meant the minimum investment at af is 1 crore i mean 100 lakh but it is not an investment it is a commitment what you give in 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 mutual fund let's say you commit uh, 5000 you will have to pay 5000 and if it is a pms obviously if it is 50 lakhs you will have to pay 50 lakhs and in pms you are giving a commitment of 1 crore now fund manager will decide whether to take uh, 100 lakh or 1 crore uh, upfront or at a tranches so the commitment is 1 crore let's say for real estate fund i'll take an example of real estate fund the fund manager would have identified only two projects currently so to the extent probably you will take only 25 lakhs initially and balance 75 lakhs he will call for he will give i mean notice uh, to the investors uh, before uh, investing 
So it will be from four branches or a three branches or a two branches, and there are funds which comes with one branches also in the beginning also they take. So ideally, it is commitment is going to not uh, the um, of course the investment has to be made over the period, but this is what uh, you know broadly I uh, would try to say. <coughs> this the slide which we shared uh, last month. So if we take the industry growth, PMS is growing sixteen percentage CAGR for the past <coughs> five years. Whereas AF has grown uh, 16 percentage, mutual fund has grown uh, 13 percentage. Put together, PMS and AF is an alternative investment industry. It has grown about uh, 26 percentage, which is double than uh, the mutual fund growth. Now, this PMS grows 16 percentage. In the last five years, there has been one significant change in the regulation, which is the ticket size has increased from 25 lakhs to 50 lakhs. In spite of that, the growth is 16 percentage. Else, if the ticket size remained at the same 25 lakhs, obviously we, we believe that the, uh, the growth would have been, you know, at least double than what we are seeing. So that is <coughs> that is the kind of growth what you are seeing at PMS and AF. Now, why this PMS and AF space is growing significantly, specifically AF? Because of variety of product which is there, aspirants are growing, people started earning a lot of money. And at a traditional product, there is very limitation in terms of, you know, putting your uh, money in terms of uh, allocations. And whereas in AA for a PMS, you get a significant difference, not only in terms of asset allocation, but also in terms of, you know, the structure and the probability of making uh, more returns. And <coughs> we also give an outlook that even at 26 percentage growth, put together as an alternative investment industry, it might reach, I mean, 45 or 44 lakh crore. And whatever we mentioned here, you know, generally whatever we uh, come out with the projection, that has been always widely covered uh, across the media. And uh, this is not just, I mean, this year projection. Every year we come out with the projection. And our projection has been, uh, you know, keep changing because we have been conservative. I've been talking about 26 percentage growth here, but the growth would be at 30, 35 percent. That is the kind of growth what we are seeing. But broadly, you know, more than a growth, what I'm saying in this slide is that there are three products, mutual funds, PMS, and AF. And let's say if somebody is having surplus money to put across, let's say three, four, five, four kind of money, then it makes sense to consider PMS and AF. And if you're having limited money, kind of, you know, 50 lakhs or one crore, then it is not advisable to stick at AF and uh, PMS. However, maybe eventually you will start earning more. And, and, and when you reach that stage, I think definitely you will have to consider uh, PMS AF as a product. We have seen in this, we have been in this uh, PMS Bazaar is there for over uh, six, six and a half years now. When we started PMS Bazaar, PMS and AF have always been as a choice. <clears throat> First preference would be mutual fund or a direct equity. And then, you know, the client will come to uh, PMS or an AF in spite of having the surplus money. But today it is not a choice. PMS and AF as an alternative investment. <clears throat> it has become a need for an investor for the factors, you know, few of the factors, whatever I would mention. So I'll end my presentation here and I'd like to take any questions uh, here on. Thanks. Somebody has asked about uh, PMS fees. So, uh, in PMS, there are three different fee structure. One is a fixed fees. Let's say that I put a crore rupee. Then the fixed fees could be, the range could be from somewhere between 1.5 to 2.5. Depends on the PMS uh, schemes. Now, let's hypothetically take two percentage. Out of this uh, one crore rupees investment, Technically, you'll have to pay 2 lakh rupee every annum. Now, the fees will be charged on a quarterly basis or a monthly basis. Again, depends on the PMS company, but broadly, it will be on a quarterly basis. How they will do is that, let's say the beginning of an investment is 1 crore. Let's say end of the quarter, your value has become, this 1 crore has become 1.25 crore. So, they will take an average of that 90 days. And for that average, they will charge 0.5%, which is 2% divided by 4, because it is a quarterly. And that's how uh, you know this uh, will turn into. 
ஆனால் ஃபிக்ஸ்ட் ஃபேஸ் செகண்ட் ஃபேஸ் இஸ் ஹைபிரிட் ஃபேஸ் ஹைபிரிட் ஃபேஸ் the the fixed fee, the fixed component will come down i told that fixed component is 1.5 to 2.5 i have taken example of 2 2 percentage at hybrid i'll take an uh, example is uh, as a 1 or 1.5 percentage so you will have to pay 1.5 percentage in addition to this there will be a profit sharing now the profit sharing let's say that again i'll take the same example you put a 1 crore at the end of the year the 1 crore has become 2 uh, crore in this 2 crore they will charge 1.5 percentage assuming that is an average and then there will be hurdle rate now technically i will take hurdle rate as a uh, 12 percentage so your profit is 100 lakhs so the hurdle is 12 lakhs so the balance will be 88 lakhs so for this 88 lakh rupee they will take a profit sharing of 10 15 percentage kind of uh, profit sharing which will be <coughs> informed in advance and uh, client will know that you know how much fees they are going to pay so first i told fixed fees second is a hybrid and third is a only profit sharing which means you don't have to pay fees unless until portfolio managers make money so every year or anniversary of the investment would be a cut off date and let's say you put 100 rupee or 1 crore rupee and 1 crore has become again 2 crore i mean in one year 2 crore is uh, unlikely to happen but still for an example i'm taking 1 crore has become 2 crore again there will be a hurdle rate and in hybrid the hurdle rate or technique i mean will be little higher but in a only profit sharing scheme the hurdle rate will be lesser now it will generally it is 8 percentage so out of 100 lakh profit you made this 8 lakh rupee they will remove as a hurdle remove in the sense you know they will not charge profit for that hurdle so the balance is 92 lakh rupee so for this 92 lakh rupee they will take up to 20 percentage profit sharing so these are the three profit sharing uh, which is there can you take regular returns from pms yes profit sharing will be taken only on profits and also sevi has made that there should be some higher water mark every year now let's say again we invest 1 crore let's say that uh, second year it has become 1.2 crore and third year it has become 1.25 crore so that the level become higher watermark so let's say that fourth year 1.25 crore has become let's say again 1.1 crore ideally from your investment you are sitting at a profit but still the fund manager cannot able to take a profit sharing because you have to perform over and above this 1.25 crore which is a higher uh, hurdle rate or the pms pms in some option available for an array or platform yes uh, nra option is very much available but not all the funds take nra uh, but most of the funds take specifically there is a restriction if an nra is from uh, united states and uh, canada barring us and canada i would say that most of the funds take uh, money in pms and the afo i think if somebody wants to ask a question you can also unmute and ask uh, to make it more interactive uh, please <coughs> feel free to unmute and ask yeah somebody has asked to return on uh, pms has taken fees in the consideration yes as per again regulation whenever the fund manager report the performance it has to be uh, inclusive of all uh, charges including the fees uh, can i ask you a question please Yeah, yeah, please, please. Yes, go. Yeah, yeah. My question was: Suppose I invest one crore in a PMS. Okay. Maybe after uh, three years, the value is around one point four or one point five crores. Okay. Now I need some money. Can I take some that fifty crores uh, back to my this thing, or is there any load on that, or we have to wait for the mandatory period of five years or seven years? Yes, sir. So first, I'll make it clear: PMS again, as per regulation, there is no locked in. no okay. pms can have locked in so technically client can exit any day next day also after investing but funds will charge an exit load now again there are some funds who will charge exit load for 3 years there are some funds which will charge exit load for 1 year and there are many funds who don't charge any exit load at all which means the client can enter at any time can exit at any time so that depends on the fund so technically there is no exit load to answer your question yes you can exit now depends on the fund whether you have to pay the charges or not the fund will decide sir okay 
but for an af it is always a, a locked in period right if most is around if it is long only if it is long okay. there are schemes which comes with open ended but broadly i would say that locked in scheme but while investing itself you know that whether it's an open ended or a closed ended sir okay okay thank you thank you very much so there is one question which on uh, pms uh, thing of one year like tax okay so pms taxation is exactly similar to direct equity there is no changes at all which mean on a short term it is 15 percentage on a long term it is 10 percentage similar to direct equity the difference is not on a taxation the difference is that when you are doing direct equity you get your pnl report from the respective brokers whereas in pms it is again mandatory to all the portfolio manager to give a audited report one auditor has to report i mean audit the pnl and then share it to the client so any clients whoever is investing in pms every year you will get an audited report stating what is your short term capital gain and long term capital gain actually i have one question uh, maybe it is uh, very basic how risky are these uh, pms is it possible to lose Uh, all your investment oh, in no. a pm no, no. see i can i think you can you will have to put this question to equity as such whether you will able to lose your uh, money at uh, equity technically yes i would say you know if at all if i need to answer this is what i would say so look at the underlying for underlying whether it's a equity mutual fund or equity a for equity pms the underlying is always an equity now if i take the returns for the last 5 years or 10 years or we have a track record right 10 15 20 years kind of track record for all i mean mutual funds and to an extent pms also have and a is a very beginning stage we have so none of the fund have uh, you know given uh, kind of i mean negative if you stay for 5 years at least you will make you know kind of very decent uh, money in uh, in equity assets so definitely you'll not lose money for sure mm. and many of these pms companies they have uh, these uh, theme based uh, lot of different themes mm -hmm. and uh, for us uh, to see that uh, it is a little bit confusing like which company to select and what is the theme to select so how do we go about in selecting the right uh, pms company and the right theme okay yeah see that's how the pms bazaar comes in so i'll tell you Uh, in terms of the number of uh, portfolio managers it is over 350 portfolio managers are there now there are boutique fund managers and there are institution say for an example kotak icic stfc motilal oswal ask there are a lot of institutions who are running pmss similarly there are a lot of i mean uh, boutique fund managers who are also runs uh, pmss now if you take the returns has been uh, in a long term basis we have seen at pms bazaar boutique fund managers have performed extremely well when comparing with the institutions sir so while choosing uh, the pms the basic things you know no first of all you will have to see that you know it is a well regulated product you know first of all regulation itself uh, you know it omits the risk of you know doing a mistake you know kind of uh, choosing second is that uh, you will have to <coughs> to choose the right fund we will have to do couple of studies basically the first study would be how long the fund manager has been in the industry and how long they are managing the money at the pmss second is that how much returns they have delivered third is that well in terms of return how much risk they have taken in turn so there are couple of studies like you know there is one study which comes with standard deviation which talks about the volatility one study which talks about sharp ratio which again talks about you know kind of the kind of risk whatever he has taken how much return he has delivered so there are a lot of studies which is available <coughs> based out of i mean the fund managers in navy his performance his pedigree his background again his research research team size and what are the assets they are managing how they are managing so it is all combination of all sir combination of all and that's how you know ideally for any pms somebody has to choose not just pms alone <coughs> any product don't choose just based out of uh, performance I think you'll have to connect with some of the best advisors or on distributors so that they can help you in terms of choosing the right PMS. Somebody has asked, "Does PMS remain invested one hundred percent age or remain in cash?" It's a very good question. Depends on the PMS. Now, first, uh, and I'll compare with mutual fund again. At mutual funds, a fund manager cannot be able to take one hundred percent cash call. He can't take. Even if he take, he can't execute. Is what I'm trying to put. but as technically at pms a fund manager can take a cash call and he can sell the entire portfolio and, and consider the cash also 
<clears throat> but so far nobody has did according to our knowledge but i'm saying technically as a product it allows but i've seen some of the funds who have taken 30 40% of cash cost and like in mutual fund it cannot happen so it is not mandatory for a fund manager to always it on 100% invested depends on the fund manager we have seen that maximum uh, i mean cash call is 30 35% at one point of time is there any ratings uh, for the pms just like uh, mutual funds yes so again this is an interesting question <clears throat> see we have been doing ratings what we did is that we tied up with uh, one of the reputed uh, company called crisel who are very popular in terms of rating so <clears throat> till this year march we did rating for pms which is very much available at our uh, platform but we have stopped for various reason we could not able to continue but we at pms bazaar we are working extremely deeper in terms of bringing up, bringing back the rating at our own uh, stance so we'll be so far whatever ratings we have did it was limited uh, with crisel and pms bazaar tie up and from next year we envisage to come out with our own ratings is there any other questions yeah yeah a uh, last question from my yeah, side please. yeah you you talked about the real estate funds which is done mm. by the aafs mm. yes. now how do they actually you know generate profit only based on the project because most of the projects uh, they are investing should have a long gestation period now how exactly they are able to generate returns is it on par with the equity based returns or do you feel till now how is it uh, how does it uh, perform in comparison to the equity based funds or mutual funds certainly is that see the returns it is uh, it doesn't you know the range will not change any fund manager will target you know they'll clearly given a presentation itself like how much returns are they targeting now any real estate fund i have seen that the target is between 16 to 24 percentage kind of uh, return now what they try to do is that they're funding to the builders they don't uh, do construct and they don't do anything they basically fund to the builder and in turn what they try to do they take to try to take a collateral in two times or 2.5 times or so on and then they also take you know the first to say the first money has to come to the fund you know there are a lot of restriction and flow which will come to the fund <clears throat> and in terms of the experience what we have seen in the past 3 years 5 years down the line see there are some funds even during the covid it has paid the uh, you know this kind of interest you know regularly to the uh, investors uh, there have been very very rare cases we have seen that you know they are not uh, could not able to deliver the return at a given point of time but most of the funds have delivered and i am talking about last 3 years 4 uh, year stories uh, and if i go back you know 7 8 year story the story is little ugly there have been some of the uh, largest institutions they could not able to deliver the return as committed they could able to and also they extend the fund the fund let's say the fund tenure is 7 years instead of 7 they were always have an option to extend one year two year they extended the fund and they could able to give back to the capital and kind of return of 7 8 percentage now why there is a difference it is not just because of the fund uh, uh, you know potential it is also because of rera because of rera it has become very stringent for a builder and hence it has become an advantage for uh, the for real estate funds now i seen that most of the real estate funds they will get fund uh, you know for a construction but not for an you know, acquisition or a beginning stage that's where this aa fund uh, plays a vital role and i have seen that any funds which comes with the commitment of forming 500000 crore the fund get raised within i mean 3 to 6 month down the line which means that there is a huge potential and why the fund could able to raise you know uh, you know kind of 500000 crore within very short period because these investors have already seen money in the previous fund so last 3 4 years the trend is very good at uh, real estate and uh, we hope that uh, the trend will continue for you know next couple of years as well sir yeah actually you one much. one suggestion uh, whatever we try it uh, based on our experience because initially it might be a little uh, uh, riskier or you might think it is difficult to invest 50 lakhs as a single person in a pms what you can do is form a small uh, partnership company uh, with four five people each of you committing to invest 10 lakhs a year for the next 5 years 
uh, without and there should not be expectation of uh, return within five years and uh, every year you can invest in one pms so like this uh, you can go ahead for five years so one thing is your 50 lakh is invested in uh, five different uh, pms's at the end of five years and also just like a sip you are putting the money every year so at the end of five years maybe you can start encashing uh, each pms for the next three four years so, so only thing uh, i would suggest you know uh... So now yeah. let's say that you are collecting money from five and making a fifty lakhs. So yeah. Here the decision uh, from the five would be very difficult. You know, let's say you yeah. might say that you know investing would be fine. The beginning of the journey will always be fine. Now let's say that fifty has become thirty. Hypothetically, I'm just putting it a worst case. Mm -hmm. The three might say that you know we need to exit, and two mm -hmm. might we need to retain. So all this confusion might arise, whether it's a downside or an upside. So yeah. My suggestion is that, you know, if we have potential to put 50 lakhs, because it should be more of an individual uh, decision than, you know, collective decision. This is just my suggestion. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. otherwise, generally, for collecting uh, money together and put across, you know, we have not seen the I mean, similar case at uh, PMS Bazaar as such. Mm -hmm. That's my so thought. Yeah, yeah, I understand, agree, sir. Basically, it has to be uh, like-minded five people to get that uh, five people is very difficult so that is why i said if you have like-minded four people who are committed to investing for the next four five years then uh, this may it has worked decently well for us uh, but uh, just a suggestion if somebody i'm not telling that you have to do this way just an alternative way of uh, yeah somebody yes. has mentioned that pms has underperformed uh, nifty i don't know which pms they are referring to there are a lot of PMSs who have uh, beaten the benchmark uh, significantly, including Nifty. And if you take in terms of, I'll give just one PMS, uh, you know, which has delivered 36 percentage gather for the last uh, 10 years. So, which means even at 25 percentage, you know, your money will become 10 times. And uh, probably it should have become 14, 15, 16 times in 10 years. And none of the mutual funds have given such return in the 10 years uh, basis or a Nifty for that uh, matter. So, we can cherry pick, you know, there could be some funds which definitely, you know, would have not uh, done better than the Nifty for sure. But broadly, broadly as a category within, you know, 350 schemes, whatever you have seen, the study, like what we do, whether mutual fund is beating the benchmark or PMS is beating the benchmark, we have seen that always, you know, PMS is uh, beating the benchmark at a long term basis. On a short term basis, the story might be different. When I mean long term, the minimum year has to be at least five years. Maybe some of the funds would have uh, underperformed the Nifty for sure. But again, I uh, repeat it is some of the funds. Sir. Any other questions to be taken? So basically, uh, I think I missed that question. Somebody has asked if this uh, total investment corpus is say 3 crores, hmm. how much you should be putting in a PMS? out of the three crores and how much should be in equity and mutual fund i am i know it is depending on the age and risk potential and all these things but uh majority of the investment should it go into <laughs> mutual fund equity and other options and then a small risk taking part on the pms or i've seen some people even if they have three crores they have put it in six pmss so no, i'll tell you, sir. I'll, I'll tell yeah. you see, first of all i mean i assume that they they have uh, put different asset class already because you know first of all <coughs> equity <coughs> alone cannot be an asset class that should be allocation to real estate that should be allocation to gold to an extent you know for emergency cash and then equity also as a one of the asset class so i assume that this client has a proper asset allocation at uh, the other asset class and then balance three code is what i'm considering so if this is three crores given only for an equity allocation, this three crore is uh, definitely suffice. I would say that entire money can put into PMS itself. Now, are we do we need to put the entire three crore in a single PMS or a six different PMS? Again, it will depends on the investors. Now, I would hypothetically say three PMS is what you can choose. I will choose one growth style. I will choose one value style. Because, you know, I'm participating in both different style at two PMSs. Again, let's say just with two crore rupees investment, the number of stocks would be, let's say, roughly about 50. And within these 50 stocks, I'm getting diversified within two different style. And probably for a kicker, what I will choose is that probably I'll choose uh, for this one crore. Maybe I can choose 50, 50 lakhs in two different funds again. Maybe one into the small cap or one into the mid cap space. 
So broadly, I'm well covered. I'm I'm getting good allocation of the large cap space with the proper growth and uh, value style, and probably additional one crore rupees, whereas uh, fifty lakhs into the small cap and fifty lakhs into the mid cap, which is I mean again uh, kicker to me. So broadly, I'm able to make a decent return uh, over the period. Uh, so, but check check this depends to the client, sir. Thank you, sir. Are there any other questions? So maybe uh, some of you can uh, uh, maybe before we wind up, if you can give a feedback or what did you understand uh, uh, from today's session and. Uh, Maybe if we, we would like to hear some output from the participants. Um, so maybe one or two of you can unmute and uh, talk. And uh, if anybody has invested in a PMS out of our group in this, I think we have around 25 people. Uh, have you invested in PMS and what has been your experience? Yeah. Uh, can I? Uh, yes, sir, yes sir, please. Yeah. My name is Dr. Murli. So this talk was excellent and uh, this is a very good eye opener the thing was i already invested in a pms based on the recommendation of the bank people the hfc bank people okay. uh, but uh, this talk gave me a lot of you know inputs about how they do it how they charge what they do i think this is a very very good basic talk uh, given by Mr. Palavarajan, I really compliment you for arranging this. And I would like to thank him also for making it very simple and straightforward without going to the complexities and explaining things in quite detail. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So if anybody else is thinking of investing in the PM, maybe you can also give your opinion out of our group. <laughs> So somebody has asked for any reference uh, check from the site. Of course, PMS Bazaar is the best and we are number one. And we've been here for six, six and a half years. And I think our platform is one of the best platform to check. Thank you. Maybe a personal question to Mr. Pallavarajan. How did you identify this space? <laughs> like, Because whatever you have identified is very unique. And how did you uh, start off? And because something I think whatever you are doing has not been existent before you do. Yes, and maybe yes. you are the only person who is doing this uh, thing. So how did you get into this? And a little bit about your personal journey. Sure, sure. Sir. It is... From a lawyer, uh, from your education in law, how did you pivot to this financial space? Maybe that might be interesting for us to hear. Yes, sir. See, law was a wish of my father and the hence I wanted to do. Okay, but I don't want to practice. Maybe in future I might uh, do. Uh, but otherwise, my passionate was more into, you know, investing, stock market uh, kind of thing. Uh, so I, I worked for a, a company called uh, Mutila Rosewall and uh, currently into equity space, you know, kind of buying, selling, and I was managing some of the branches here at uh, Chennai. Uh, then, I mean, this entrepreneurial journey, uh, you know, the aspiration was always there. So when I started my journey, uh, what I found is that uh, there have been plethora of information and data which was available for a mutual funds client. And uh, perhaps uh, the information was more than what investors made. So that is the kind of information was available at uh, platforms. And somebody who wants to put 24 lakhs, those days, you know, 2017, it was 24 lakhs was the minimum ticket size. Somebody who wants to put 24 lakhs, they don't have any information at, at, at any of the uh, portal or uh, platform. So I, I've seen that, you know, in terms of uh, 5,000 clients, I see there is a data rich and the 24 class client is very poor in terms of the data and information. So that's a spark, you know, which has uh, come in. And we've been wondering why PMSs are not uh, sharing the data. <clears throat> so then we met a couple of PMSs company and they always wanted to keep, you know, more uh, PMSs as a private and they don't want to share the data because they believe that these clients are not, I mean, online. They don't want to come online. They're more of offline and they're more of, you know, banks, relationship manager uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, traction which is happening in the industry. But however, you could able to convince uh, some of seven, eight uh, portfolio managers. And uh, that's how we started in the year 2017. And, uh, but it was, uh, since it was a need, 
uh, you know then the traction was uh, humongous we never thought you know we'll get uh, mean this kind of uh, registration currently we are uh, having 55000 subscribers you know who registered at our uh, platform and not only from india but across global and also some of the reputed institutions also have uh, uh, you know registered at our platform so this has turned uh, you know when we started it was just eight portfolio managers so then the industry realized okay it is not a private product it has to be in public and uh, because people are affordable uh, to invest with like there are plethora of investors who are there to put money and also they want to do some you know kind of analysis and it was very limited the product which was available for all the clients it was just a 10 12 product which was available when we started but there are some 300 products we want to bring all the products and eventually we could reach over the period and you know that's how the journey has been that's pretty it was pretty simple there, there is no data no information which is available and the other side was challenging and there was a mindset of an industry we need to convince the industry with this portfolio manager and keep bring on and prove to an extent and then you know we believe that you know most of the uh, pmss will come automatically one there is a traction and we have seen and i'll say i believe that um, uh, i remember in 2019 the investors started asking why your data is not there at pmss report why mm. pmss is not there at pmss platform so whomever they told that we will not share the data they called us you know in turn and they wanted to put our uh, you know data at our platform so that is a kind of uh, uh, you know traction uh, what we made in the industry sir mm-hmm. so basically you identified a need and then uh, everything was a uh, little absolutely. easier absolutely absolutely, absolutely sir. and uh, the data basically you are collecting from all the pmss com- companies the source they... is the respective asset management company yes sir they are the source okay okay so it was very interesting sir so you identified a need and then which was market which was not there before and then i think now as the pms industry everything is growing the need for your services also going to keep on increasing slowly absolutely absolutely sir so are there any yeah. other questions uh, uh, finally we can before we close we can have one last question or comment uh because many of our uh, maybe i also want to know about uh, uh, how many of you have been attending the sessions uh, regularly and how it has really helped you as it uh, g- change the way you are thinking about investments uh, just to know about our course because i wanted to have it as a small 10 weeks course like this week we talk about pms so then uh, for one week Uh, all our members keep uh, uh, thinking about pms uh, discussing so that uh, some of them can take the decision to invest in pms so every week there is a new topic uh, which is being discussed and uh, so uh, thanks uh, for everybody uh, to be here on a sunday afternoon and uh, uh, thanks to mr pallavarajan uh, for uh, it was a very interesting very simple talk sir i think this is what most of us needed because when it gets very complicated we don't understand anything so as doctors our financial knowledge is very less so whatever you covered was very basic but something very useful for all of us and uh, uh, thank you for uh, supporting us and uh, i hope to attend one of your summits uh, maybe upcoming summits in the before sir before definitely sir and uh, Uh, any any, any of the doctors or i mean participant who are uh, wish to uh, connect and discuss separately on their portfolio on their pms and if they can feel free to connect me yeah also. i will share your number sir number to them and uh, please uh, feel free to contact uh, mr pallavarajan and uh, uh, thank you everybody and have a nice uh, weekend and uh, looking forward to connect you uh, next week we have two more uh, sessions one will be on uh, succession planning will and real estate all the succession planning basically writing uh, wills uh, there is a session on that by dr kumaresh and then uh, we will have a last week of recap of all the 10 sessions and thank you everybody and uh, meet you on the next week session thank you sir thank you all thanks for the opportunity thank you all i enjoyed thoroughly thank you thank you sir